Hello and welcome to Detectify. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us today and uh, we're going to show you how to get started and get the most value out of Detectify. Yeah, and we'll cover four things. We'll show how to import your assets so you get a coverage of your whole attack surface, how you start monitoring and scanning your attack surface, and how you work with your findings, and also show you some resources to help you along the way. So the first thing you have to do to get started with Detectify is to import your assets. And those are mainly your domains. So the primary way that we want you to do this is uh, by using the connectors. Mm. And these can be found uh, directly in the main menu on the left side. And by clicking that, uh, we come to this, uh, get this um, empty state and we can easily click Add Connectors. And the reason we want you to start here and what these connectors are is they hook up to whatever platform you're using for hosting or DNS management. And uh, we will, it will ensure that we continuously import domains uh, that are added. So as soon as something new is added, it will be imported to Detectify and we will directly start mapping it, figuring out what it is, uh, classify it and evaluate if there are any risks or security concerns that you should know about. And uh, this is definitely the easiest way to get started. And there are a few options you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common ones are AWS, uh, Azure, Cloudflare, and Google, but we have some, or we have, but we also have more uh, of these and more being added uh, all the time. So if you can't find the option that you want, reach out and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So that was a way to add a large attack surface very smoothly. Yeah, and so there are a few more ways you can, you can do this. And if you, do, if you have a small attack surface or if you just want to start out with a small POC, you can use the Get Started flow. Mm -hmm. And it, it will guide you through each step of the onboarding and the first step is to add the asset. Uh, so we can do that here. We can add example.com. And the next step is then to verify that you own that asset. It's, this is an easy step, but we need, to, we need to get that verification from you. And there are a couple of different ways you can do it, but the main way is to add a D, uh, DNS record, a TXT record, uh, with the right information. And, and there, there's this guide to, to how that looks. You can also upload a TXT file uh, to the web application to where it's hosted. And don't modify anything, follow, it, follow the rules and the, the text as it is in those, uh, and that should be good. And if you're using the DNS method, uh, it will take some time to propagate through the DNS infrastructure. Uh, so be patient and uh, uh, it, it should go through. And if you have any issues, uh, you can reach out to our support and we will gladly help you out. Mm. Uh, then the first step we recommend with which product to use, because there are two different products here you can choose from, Surface Monitoring, our external tax surface management product, and uh, application scanning. And they sort of complement each other, right? To get a full coverage of your whole attack surface, you want to leverage the broad scanning and the deep scanning. Yes, and that's completely right. But our recommendation, as it says here, to start with service monitoring to ensure you cover the full thing. And service monitoring is really easy to get started with. It's basically one click. I can just click here, enable service monitoring, and we will start uh, mapping that attack surface under that root domain. And uh, we will start telling you about changes to it, uh, what uh, IPs we find, what ports we find, and what technologies we find, as well as the misconfigurations and the vulnerabilities that we can find on, on any of the web applications and applications that are underneath that, that root. How long does it take before I will start seeing things being populated? That's a good question. So we run things as soon as you add it, uh, but it can take uh, some minutes for things to be populated. Uh, especially new new domains like subdomains underneath that and, and ports and IPs but we always strive to do that as quickly as possible but it's it's reasonable to expect a few minutes uh, uh, to before anything starts populating in in the UI and where will I be able to see those findings yeah so here we can 
have a look at where this data will start to populate uh, in the attack surface. And there are a few different places for this, but the main place is from the All Assets page. That's where I would start. And so it's under the Insight section and anything that uh, our engines produce as, as security insights and information about your attack service will be populated under that section in the menu. So on the All Assets page, you will start to see all uh, of uh, the assets that you have, all the domains that you have, and what state they are in. So that will tell you if something is exposing open ports and, and so on. And you can find information about uh, DNS records and when we first found these different assets. So this is a good place, but you can also slice the attack service in different ways, IP addresses, ports and technologies to get different views on this. Exactly. So you could see easier to see outliers by looking at it from different kind of lenses. Let's say we want to have everything hosted in certain countries. And by looking at the IP address, I could notify, oh, we're actually hosting something in a country that we shouldn't. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, vulnerabilities and misconfigurations and, and any risks identified will be under the vulnerabilities uh, menu item where you can find your open vulnerabilities and of course, uh, you can find anything that you've already fixed or marked in any other way. But that's surface monitoring. Mm -hmm. And that way, how would, how would I best know when, when we started finding vulnerabilities? Well, if you, if you use surface monitoring, you get the broad scan. Mm -hmm. If you have some rich web apps that you really want to make sure they are thoroughly scanned deeply, you can use our protocol application scanning. And you set it up by adding something we call a scan profile. And here you get to select a domain or an IP that you want to scan deeper, more thoroughly. And um, you just select one here as an example, you name it. And of course, as a default, we recommend you have a scheduled scan, so it does it recurringly, so you don't have to manually go in and start these scans. You just simply click uh, Create Scan and Start to trigger an immediate scan. And as you can see, it will jump up there and you see at the status that is currently running and it's scheduled to run again in seven days because we use a scheduled scan and the results as soon as we find something, we'll get populated in vulnerabilities. And everything that we find, no matter if it's application scanning or surface monitoring, will be combined in this view. So you have everything collected in one place, so you can easily triage and sort and filter and know what you should focus and take action on. And it's all available in this view, and you can mark them as fixed, accepted risk, false positive, or forward them to the group that, sh that should take action on this particular finding. Great, that way. Yeah. But so, like, I, I know that these application scans can take like some minutes to run, sometimes even a, f a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So, how will I know when it's done and uh, and I know to check the the product again? Yeah, depending on how large your uh, application is, the scan will take that amount of time. And uh, of course, we know you're busy, so you, we don't want you to sit and have to monitor detectify.com all the time. So a recommendation is to set up integrations. So you can choose to use one of our recipes and connect to your preferred tool that you already use. You can set up to get an email notification as soon as the scan is finished, or be very specific on when you want to get an email notification, maybe just for high or critical vulnerabilities, so you don't get notified if it's everything is good. But that's also nice to get know that everything is good, right? Yeah. Like a pat on the back. Yeah, so we have everything from email integrations, Microsoft Teams, uh, Slack, of course, Splunk, and Trello. Or if you want to do something very customized, you can use our public API as well mm. to really fine tune how you want to be notified and where. Thank you, Dunway. So that was just a short demo of how to get started, how best to get started with Detectify. Um, but there are more resources that you can use if you want to dive more into the details. Uh, so there's the knowledge base that's linked to directly from the menu in the product. And there are 
lots of articles about anything uh, related to how to get started. And there are more in-depth demos that will dive into what you can expect from Detectify as a tool. Um, we also have a What's New page that will allow you to um, follow along for all the product releases and, and the changes to the product, uh, both updates in the uh, UI, um, but also uh, updates to the assessment engines. So uh, you can see any new tests added, uh, but also if we are improving any of those tests that are already added in order to reduce false positives, as an example. And you can get in contact with us uh, through the contact form in, in the product if you have any questions. And uh, there's even the possibility to, from the Get Started flow, to book a demo directly and to get to meet us and learn more about the product. Yeah, get a live demo instead of just watching this pre-recorded demo. Exactly. Look forward to hearing more from you and see you in the tool. Yeah.